In this tutorial, point clouds. From scanning in the field to modeling in the office, I show you the complete workflow. That's coming up straight after this. Welcome to Power Search, where I show you everything that I know about Revit. If you are visiting today, consider subscribing so that you don't miss out on any future content. In this tutorial, I am using an iPhone, but you can also use an Android device. The first step is to launch the app. Enter the login credentials. The next step is to create a job. Do this by tapping the plus symbol here. Remove the default name and enter details specific to your project. Use the suburb name and the job or project number. For the purpose of this demonstration, I will call this test01. Once the name is complete, tap save. With the job created, tap the screen here to activate the job. This takes you to the job map. This is where the scan data will be displayed. Before you start scanning, it is important to connect the device to the scanner via Wi-Fi. To do this, find settings on your device and locate the scanner network name. To complete the connection, enter the password inscribed on the scanner. This can be found on the battery lid. Back to the app. Start a new scan by tapping this location icon. Give the scanner name, preferably descriptive of the location. Now we are going to take some time unpacking these controls down here. Alterations to these settings will impact the scan time, shown here. Watch as I toggle the settings, the scan time increases. Firstly, imagery. Turning this off means the point cloud will not be colorized. I recommend having this on. Next, HDR, meaning high dynamic range. This feature optimizes the color by means of light intensity. This is useful in dark and bright areas of a panorama. And scan density. This refers to the dot density of the points of the point cloud. Choose from low, medium or high. With the settings defined, initiate the scan by tapping the play button. A linear bar reports the scan progress. Once the scan is complete, all the data transfers to the device. To view the data, tap here, then select from the menu here. 360 will display a panoramic photo. 3D displays the 3D model. And Map displays in plan view. On Map view, check the scan data has no obvious obstructions. Use one finger to pan and two fingers to zoom. If all is in order, start the next scan here. By now you would have picked up the scanner and moved it to a different location on the site. Repeat the steps. The previous settings should be retained, so just tap the play button to progress. The second scan, called Setup 8, has finished. But here, notice Setup 7 is selected. There are some new prompts down the bottom. We'll get to these shortly. First, go to Map View. In the Map View, Setup 7 is still selected, as shown by the blue dot. To select Setup 8, tap its red dot. Next, link the scans together as a way of combining the data into one model known as a bundle. To do this, tap the link icon here. Here you can analyse the scans to ensure that there is sufficient overlap between the two. The scanner typically does a good job of aligning the scans to each other. You can, if required, manually manipulate these in both plan and elevation view. Once you are happy with the alignment, tap Optimize to lock them in place and then tap Create Link. Those two scans are now locked together into one model known as a bundle. Notice both dots are now selected simultaneously. Then, to scan again, repeat the steps. Tap the location icon. The 
Back in the office, it is time to download the data. Open Cyclone Register. Create a project to host the data. The menu here will guide you through the steps to work through, starting with Import. Pick the small down arrow and pick the Field 360 icon. This is where the data is currently stored. Now connect the device containing the data to obtain an IP address. To complete synchronization, open the Field 360 app on the device and locate the information icon here. Type this IP address and port number where indicated. Remember to keep the app open. Then click Add to Project. Typically, point clouds are large files, so the load could take some time. Here is the imported project. Then move across to Review and Optimize. Here is a breakdown of the bundle recording each of the linked scans. Then click Sitemap and then True Slicer to interrogate the model using this toolbar. Register also has additional controls down here. Moving along to finalize, check the metrics using a traffic light system where green is good to go, yellow is acceptable and red requires review. If all is in order, click accept and accept again to proceed. Finally, move along to report. The software will document a report in PDF format with interesting information. Set the save location for the file and then click Publish Options. Tick this checkbox to export into RCP format, which is compatible with Autodesk Recap. And this is confirmation that the process has been completed. Launch Recap and then click New Project. And then click Import Point Cloud. Create a new project and proceed. Then move up to Select Files to Import. Find the saved export from the previous step where Cyclone Register 360 was used and click Open. Here is the exported data. Click Launch to proceed. On screen is the scanned data model. In the next part of this tutorial, I will demonstrate the workflow for preparing a point cloud for import into Revit. I am using an out-of-the-box sample file which you can also use to practice at home. Here are the tools. Find the monitor, which is the display settings, and then move across to the eye. Come down to tools and turn on the grid. Now, it's obvious that there's a misalignment. We need to align the grid with an intersection somewhere in the model. To fix this, find the zoom tools and zoom into an intersection somewhere in the model. Hit escape to exit that command and rotate the model so that you are viewing that intersection from the inside. On the display settings, find the cube and then click on update origin and then follow the instructions on the screen. Firstly, click as best as you can to update the location of the origin. As I click, a yellow dot represents the origin. Then press Tab to update the coordination of the coordinate system. The first prompt is to update the Z axis, which is OK. Press Enter to confirm. Now, update the X axis. Somewhere in this region of the point cloud, select a point to update the location of the x-axis. Use Alt to flip the coordinates icon and use this to check the alignment. That seems to be OK now. Hit Enter to confirm. Recap is now updating the origin. Using the view cube, 
we can see the final result. Save the file. The point cloud is now ready to be imported into Revit. Launch Revit and create a new project. Then down the bottom of the screen on the status bar, open Worksets. Create a workset to host the point cloud and ensure that this is not visible in all views. From there, move up to the ribbon and locate the Insert tab. Click on Point Cloud and open the saved recap file from the previous step. And now I can demonstrate why we did all of that work in step 3 using Recap. Find Positioning. Of the three options, choose Auto, Origin to Origin and click Open. The point cloud is now aligned to Revit's internal origin which has been aligned to the project base point. Pin the point cloud and then toggle the Pinned Elements control. To complete the workflow, edit the size of the scope box in proportion to the size of the point cloud. Create a sectional view. You can see that using the origin point means that the point cloud is correctly positioned at zero. Select the point cloud and transfer this to the point cloud workset. The point cloud will disappear from view, but don't panic. Remember the global settings to turn this off in all views. Find the view template controls on the properties palette Find the Worksets Overrides and override the visibility settings for this view only. Switch to a 3D view and then from the project browser duplicate the default 3D view. Rename the copied view so that it is point cloud specific. and toggle the Workset Visibility Settings so that the cloud is also only visible in this view. It is helpful to have the DiRoots app installed. This app includes PointKit, which enables quick point selection as shown. This can be edited on the fly. I can reset the selection at any time. Or even select in between levels. That's the end of the tutorial. I hope that you learned something new and found that interesting. If you did, consider subscribing so that you don't miss out on any future content. And I will see you in the next video.